Hi, everyone. It's David George Brooke, That Gratitude Guy. And this is my Gratitude Creates Peak Performance series. And today's topic is Navigating the New Normal Through Gratitude. And this is for A Speakers on April 27th, 2021. So let me start off by saying that when we talk about gratitude, and I always say gratitude turns what you have into enough, and gratitude helps you focus on what you have more than what you don't have. But the main thing I want to start with is the relationship you have with you, the person you see in the mirror every morning, the person you see brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, whatever. It's so incredibly important to have a great relationship with that person. But it does depend also on how you look at things. And we have a choice. When you got out of bed this morning, you get on the left side or the right side of the bed, good mood, bad mood, up, down, grateful, ungrateful grateful, negative, positive, whatever it might be. And it is a choice. And I think it just depends, again, on how you look at things. You've heard many, many times about looking at the glass half full versus half empty. I've always been a glass half full guy. But I will tell you, once I was running a race, it went from Bellevue over into Seattle across, across the floating bridge. Bellevue is on the east side of Seattle. This floating bridge goes across. It was a 10K race, about six and a half miles. I'm halfway across the bridge, and I'm pumping along, and I'm kind of struggling. And I look in front of me, and there's a lot of people then I look behind me and there's thousands of people all the way back up into Bellevue, which is on the east side of Seattle. And as I turned around to keep running and I looked ahead of me and I thought, you know, if all these people weren't here, I'd be in first place. So what if they'd all gotten just sick or had a sore toe or something and hadn't come? So it does depend a lot on how you look at things. And this last year and a half through the coronavirus, the pandemic and COVID-19, it's been very challenging to say the least. But how about some of the silver linings that have come out of this? If we want to look for some of the good, all the technology on Zoom and on the bandwidth that was created, this wasn't available four or five years ago to communicate with people. The community has come together. So much of this has made a big difference. The time created, the time people got to spend with families when the kids were home from school might have been tough for a while but those little experiences they'll remember the rest of their life as the kids go back to school there's already a vaccine i don't think a vaccine's ever been created this quickly to, to stem the tide of something like this but also the efficiencies i used to spend an hour driving to a starbucks to meet my friend meet with him for an hour and then an hour back now we meet on zoom and i've got two extra hours so very very efficient the conveniences Knock, knock, knock. It's Amazon Fresh. There's my groceries. So don't have to get in the car. Don't have to fight traffic. Don't have to go anywhere. So it's so handy. And I think the community, I don't think the world's ever been through something like this together, where the entire world was pulling against uh, one foe and so in some ways really uniting the world. And oh, I think maybe the biggest thing that gratitude does is it helps you to realign your priorities. When you really embrace gratitude and you focus on what you have, I think you really realize what's important too. But I think it's important to remember there's little tips that we want to have along the way. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment. This is the gratitude tip, the first to four or five. And that is take a little card like this, a little three by five card or whatever it is. And I want you to write down your 10 or 12 most valuable qualities that you have. If you are creative, if you are talented, if you are energetic, if you are enthusiastic, if you're intense, whatever it might be, write down those 10 or 12 characteristics that describe your biggest strengths and then keep that card handy. And on the days you're having kind of a tough day, that might be just the thing that you need. That's one of the ways you can harness gratitude's uh, power. So, but I think it's so important to realize the difference between half full and half empty. Two people enter the hospital with the same disease, the positive attitude live, lives, the negative attitude dies. It's been proven over and over again. Years ago, I was learning how to fly and the, the instructor says to me one day, today's lesson, you're going to be grateful that you listen to me. And I go, what's he talking about? I was in my early 30s at the time. And he says, we're going to do something today that has to do with vertigo. And you're going to be grateful if you're listening to me. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Always listen to your instruments. Always believe your instruments. I don't care what your head says, what your stomach says, or anything else your brain says. Always believe your instruments. You'll be grateful. So we're flying along one day. I get into the clouds with a couple of buddies of mine. The plane starts to go into a 60 degree bank turn to the left. It's turning over. I think I'm straight and level. I have a bad case of vertigo, but I remember what he said. You'll be grateful if you pay attention to your instrument. So I took the heading bug and put it on going to a different heading, straight and level. The plane leveled out like this. I thought I was upside down. I had an incredible case of vertigo, but I stayed with it. And then I was so confused and disoriented, but I stayed 
stayed and remembered what he said, pulled up through the clouds and ended up going out into the clear and went back to Seattle. And that's just one of those examples. So another gratitude tip, plan to do a great daily gratitude walk. I try to get 10 to 12,000 steps in every day, but I always pair it with something I'm grateful for today. Get out, get the exercise, no matter what your age is, exercise is so important. And then pair it with something you're grateful for. It's so incredibly important. So how about the science of gratitude? There's a lot of people that think this is woo woo what I'm teaching and talking about. So bear with me as I kind of read this to you because this is some of the science and the research that's been done. I'm gonna read this kind of fast, but it's really interesting. Appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains, lower blood pressure, and less depression. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, and schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our life is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. So important. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities like empathy, excuse me, like that we to priorities to appreciate what we currently have. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for and the circumstances of life become unpleasant. Think COVID-19. Science has shown that gratitude is a natural antidepressant. The effects of gratitude when practiced daily can be almost the same as medications. It produces a feeling of long lasting happiness and contentment. When we express gratitude and receive the same, our brain releases dopamine and serotonin, the two crucial neurotransmitters responsible for our emotions. They enhance our mood immediately, making us feel happy from the inside. We are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards and we continually compare ourselves to others. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, the less anxiety you will experience. And lastly, be consciously practicing gratitude every day. We can help these neural pathways to strengthen themselves and ultimately create a permanent, grateful, and positive nature within ourselves. So that's some of the science of gratitude. So the next tip, when you have a moment, I want you to take a pad of paper, do this at your own leisure, and I want you to create a list, and it's called the most memorable events of my life. And when you do that, take a few, um, few moments, take 20 minutes, minutes, take an hour, take a few days to do it, and then turn it into one of three lists, top 25, top 50, or top 100, most memorable events of your life. What are the most memorable things you have? And then put it in priority order. The tip also, put it on a Word doc or maybe an Excel spreadsheet or something and put it from top to bottom, most important, most memorable events all the way down. And you pick how many. I did the top 100. I did this one day because I was thinking about I hadn't traveled to different parts of the world. And I was feeling sorry for myself. And I thought, wait a second, you're the gratitude guy. What are you doing talking about which where you haven't flown to or where you haven't visited? So I went and I made a list and put it out to 100, put it on an Excel spreadsheet. Now I print it. It's on my bulletin board. I have it on my desktop, on the computer. Some Sometimes I have it on my refrigerator. And again, if you're having a tough day, look at that list. You will feel better because that's how much more it can have an impact on you. Next, a gratitude journal. You can get this journal, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal on Amazon, or you can get a spiral notebook. But I will tell you, a gratitude journal is so powerful. There's a little saying in the upper left-hand corner. It says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. It's so incredible. And it's all set up where it's got everything here for you. Gratitude today, the day and the date. It's got the daily number. We'll get to that in a second. A couple of lines for your current events or special occasions. Five or six lines for what you're grateful for. Two lines for your highlight of your day. And then your gratitude intentions on the right side is what you're grateful for that hasn't even happened yet because your subconscious mind cannot distinguish between what's happened and what it thinks is going to happen. So you can actually program it to think ahead. So very, very important. And I think that it's this journal, because of the writing, I am so grateful to Kanisha Appleton for inviting me to the A speaker's presentation. It plants it in your brain. And whether you're young or old or getting up to be my age and past, it's so important to keep your brain trained. And anything that impacts it and puts more in your brain is helpful. Just like they say, do crossword puzzles, keep your brain active. It's just like a muscle, working a muscle, and it'll make such a big difference. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to just take this example and think, every single day. You can write in the gratitude journal. As I say, you can order them. You can get them on Amazon, but also just take at least write one word a day. This is the gratitude tip for the journal. Write one word a day, write maybe one sentence a day, two or three things you're grateful for, and do that over the course of a week, and then see if that doesn't make a little bit of a difference in your 
in your mindset. It definitely will impact you. And then if you take it even a step further, get the gratitude journal. That journal takes five minutes. Five minutes is all it takes to write in it. And as you can see, I had one guy, this is, this is my, I think this journal lasts about three or four months. I think this one's almost completed. And the guy comes up and I'm selling books when we were back doing live presentations. And I had a book table. He says, is this your journal? And I said, yeah. And she's going to look through it. And I go, well, yeah, don't look at it too closely. So he kind of flips through it and he goes, wow, you write in this every day. <laughs> Had you been listening to the presentation? Were you in the room for the last hour? Of course, I write it every day. It makes me feel better. Why wouldn't you want to do that if it makes you feel better? It's so, so very important. So next, once you've got a good connection with yourself and then you're focusing on what you're grateful for, you might want to think about some of your associations in your life. So here's another tip I want you to think about doing. I call this the association evaluator. There's four things here because you're kind of known by the company you keep. And you know, you hear the old example of one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. And you've probably met people in your life and you think, man, this is a good influence on me. And maybe this person isn't so good in, of a good influence on me. It's like they say, you should always play with a better tennis player if you want to get to be a better tennis player. So here's the thing to think about. Four things. Number one, think about one to three people that you want to have a disassociation with that you really shouldn't associate with anymore. They're not that healthy for you. They bring you down. They're negative, whatever it is. No judgment here. Just people that maybe you shouldn't associate with because it's just not mentally healthy for you. And there are the kind of people that are always complaining or whatever it is. That's the one to three people you want to disassociate with. Number two, one to three people you want to limit the associations with. And this is somebody that maybe it's, it could be a relative. It could be a friend that you're probably not going to not connect with them at some point, but maybe you want to limit it. Same reasons. It's just not quite as healthy for you mentally and that type of thing. And then the, the third thing is one to three people that you want to enhance or expand your association with. This might be somebody that you spend some time with, but don't spend enough time with them. I was thinking the other day when they did a Zoom call with somebody about how I need to talk to this person more often. What's maybe one of the definitions of that? After you talk to them, you always feel better. Just like the people you want to disassociate with, after you talk to them, sometimes you feel worse. So that's something that that's the three, one to three people that you want to maybe interact with on a more regular basis. Maybe it's once a month, once a week, once every quarter, whatever it might be, but that's expand association. And number four is pick somebody to either mentor yourself or for you to be mentored by. It's so great. I've had phenomenal mentors in my life that have made a huge, huge difference in my life. And so I think now I've had the chance to mentor people as I've gotten older, both as that gratitude guy and in jobs I've had along the way before I did this. And so it's made a big, big difference. So think about those so one to three you want to disassociate with, one to three you want to limit, one to three you want to expand, and somebody or a person or two that you want to either mentor or be mentored by. That's what I call the association evaluator. And I've said too, if you want to help yourself, help others. It's one of the quickest ways to get an injection or an infusion of gratitude this moment. So take another note of this. Write down one to three people that you will get a hold of in the next two or three days to contact. Call them, voicemail, text, boxer, whatever it might be, you know, email, you name it, whatever mode of transportation, mode of transportation, mode of communication, and contact them and just ask them, how can you help or support them? No agenda, don't need anything, just how can I help or support you? You would be amazed how much people are touched by that. And maybe as importantly is it'll have a big impact on you. And that means you're going to feel more grateful and you're going to feel better about yourself. And all I want to get across in this whole that gratitude guy approach is if you focus on what you have versus what you don't have. If you turn gratitude turns what you have into enough. If you keep focusing those things, your overall mindset, your mood will continue to rise. And they say a rising tide raises all ships, but it's really true. So a number of these exercises are kind of combined in concert to give you an overall feeling of feeling better. Gosh, it's a tough world we're in out there. And so just, it can make such a big difference. But we're, when we're communicating and interacting with gratitude, let's remember the golden rule. I think most of us know what the golden rule is, but I remember I got to actually read the actual specific definition out of Webster's, I think it was. It said the golden rule is the ethical principle of treating other people as oneself would prefer to be treated. So I think you probably all know what that is, but that's a great rule to really, really focus on. And as we're talking about interacting with other people, learn to be a good listener. I think it's really important. Listening is such a skill that's kind of lost. And I always kind of like the thing, learn to listen, then listen to to learn. So first of all, learn to listen. 
Don't interrupt people. Don't cut them off. Don't make it about you. Just learn to listen. And then once you become a good listener, as you continue to listen more, you'll learn more. So it's very important. And when you're listening, remember these two, that's three, this is two. Remember these two, three word phrases. When somebody's talking to you, don't interject and tell them this is what happened to me or that's so funny because this happened, that happened or interject yourself into it. Tell them three things, or two, three words as they're talking. When they finish talking, say, tell me more. And people will keep going. We took a trip to Hawaii. We did this. We went surfing. We went scuba diving. We also said, well, tell me more. Well, then we went on another tour and we went to another island and tell me more. Most people will say, well, I've already been to Hawaii and they'll inject it. So tell me more is one. The second one is, and then what? If they're talking and they finish, say, and then what? You will get more friends and you know what to do with because they're going to be so happy that you're listening to them and not just injecting yourself into that. It's that same thing. People say, what have you been doing? You went to Hawaii. Well, that's funny. The last time I went to why they start talking about themselves so here's something to write down i think is really really cool a dream written down with a date becomes a goal a dream written down with a date becomes a goal a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan and a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan and lastly a plan with action taken makes your dream come true people want to know how do i make my dreams come true well a dream written down with a date becomes a goal a goal broken down into steps becomes a plan, bite-sized pieces. And then a plan with action taken makes your dream come true. I remember when I wanted to be the gratitude guy started about 10 years ago and it's just been this nice journey just going on and on steadily up and impacting people's lives and doing these kinds of talks and in person on Zoom and all that type of thing. And it's just so, so very important. So uh, last couple of things we're going to do is sharing gratitude. I think when you really understand something and you, you sort of enjoy it, you want to share it with people. It's like when you get really good or bad news, fortunately or unfortunately, the first thing you think about is who can I talk to about this? If it's great news, you want to share the great news. If it's tough news, you want to get some empathy and some caring from somebody who's close to you and can share and maybe give you some support at a time like that. But we're, we're by nature, we're creatures that want to share. And in the sharing gratitude too, one of the things you can do, and I'm not going to be live on this, but I will just ask you to do this. Take your cell phone. I call this the four T's, telephone, text, tweet, or tell. Take your cell phone and text somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. And just use the word grateful, please. And you pick whoever it is and do as you can do one or two or three texts, whatever you feel like. And just tell those people how grateful you are to have them in your life. And please use the word grateful. And you'll notice some kind of funny things because I've had people after the talks come up and they show me their phone and, and the text that they sent to the person to tell them how grateful they were. I was, and one of the texts said, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And I remember thinking, I just wanted to tell you I was, I don't want anything. I just wanted to tell you I was grateful. Another guy shows me his phone and it says, you know, are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> so it's just, we're just trying to express some gratitude here. It makes such a big difference. It might brighten somebody's day. I was in a live performance and then there was a, a sort of a, uh, what do you call it? The audience where the chairs go up at a, like an opera house or something. There's a lady in the front row and I call it text, tweet, telephone, or tell. And it makes such a big difference when you express that to somebody. Well, she was using the telephone. And so I could hear her from the podium and she says, hi, honey, I just want to let you know how grateful I am for you. And I just appreciate you. I'm assuming it was her husband. And I just appreciate you. And I'm just really, really grateful for you. I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> I went, no, it's not my idea. It's your idea. That kind of takes a little bit of a, what do you mean some speaker told you to do it? It's supposed to be your idea. You didn't have anything to do with that. But it is so important to share I went to do skydiving once and I had 10 people all lined up to go skydiving with me and a couple of them canceled. And then on a Saturday and on a Monday or Tuesday before that, a couple called, <coughs> I've got a cough, I can't make it. I finally went the, the scuba, scuba diving. I finally went to skydiving at 10 o'clock on the Saturday for 10 people. And I walk in by myself and I go up to the counter and the guy goes, can I help you? And I go, yeah, reservation at 10 o'clock for Brooke. And he goes, yeah, great. I see it right here. And he says, where's your friends? He looks over each shoulder. Mine, there's nobody there. And I go, I don't have any. And he goes, wow, nobody showed up. I went skydiving by myself because everybody else chickened out. And so after I jumped out of the plane and did the skydiving thing and I got the little certificate and that was it. And I went to my car, smiled. I just kind of, oh, nice. I looked in the rear view Good for you. I'm like talking to myself. So that's the importance of sharing gratitude. And I had nobody to share that with. So remember, 
remember sharing gratitude is so very important. So pay attention to those tips. You too can infuse a lot of gratitude into your life. It can be such a great mindset. It can help you in attitude of gratitude. So I hope that's made a difference. I hope you've enjoyed this navigating gratitude or excuse me, navigating the new normal through gratitude. I am David George Brooke, that gratitude guy. I appreciate you listening. Have a grateful day. Take care.